guys how you guys doing it's time for another chit chat today it's going to be busy let me tell you something this week i am doing one of those um busting out a lot of videos in one week i still have the vlog from houston that i need to edit but this week i have a turmeric and mask vlog i'm working on excuse me i have this chit chat video a deep conditioner with amla oil a protective style then i also had a scalp massage video that i was working on but there's something wrong with the footage that's five videos in one week that i'm going to try to produce for you guys and then just schedule out over the course of the next two or three weeks or so so anyway you guys this is a chit chat video i really really didn't have any plans to do a chit chat video uh, this soon, even though my last one was about 11 or 12 days ago. Girl, the Southern accent is on some because I've had a, a, a half a glass of white wine because I need something to calm my nerves, child. So y'all know how we do this. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV, which is a lot, child. Now, today we're going to be detangling my hair. Baby, I've been doing a lot of traveling. What's going on here? What's going on? My hair is trained to part. You see the deep part right there. Let me take off my Apple Watch. I've been doing, I've been doing, or oh, we've been doing a lot of traveling, you guys. We've been going from East Texas to Houston to Dallas. East Texas, Dallas. East Texas. The humidity in Houston is so disrespectful. Look at my hair. Look at it. I did a twist out. <laughs> like five days ago mm -mm. so i'm gonna go ahead and lightly mist my hair with water i'm detangling with her um yeah so it's time for me to set my hair in my go-to protective style which are just twist very simple twist um and then i'm gonna be adding wooden beads to them and I will probably keep those twists in for about right before I go see my husband again in April. My husband doesn't care for the, well, it's not that he doesn't care. He prefers my hair like this, even when it's not even defined. Um, which a lot of men who like hair, they would, if their woman has hair, they would prefer to have the hair all out. All right, you guys. So what's going on in my personal life? Girl, a lot. Let me tell y'all something. We moved here earlier last year, right? So we were here in January. It was like we got here the week of JB's birthday. Because I remember my, day, my poor baby. We got here a week before JB's birthday. And me, I am that overindulgent mama bear that I do all the decorations from Pinterest. I invite people over at the last minute. I bake his cake from scratch. I do all of that. I plan this stuff like weeks in advance, right? We couldn't do that this that year. So at the very last minute, this was last year when we moved here, at the very last minute, I went to Kroger's, got him a cake, some balloons, and a toy. When I tell you his his eyes lit up so bright and that's when he turned nine girl what are you saying all that for i say all that to say we got here soon enough to where we were here during spring i don't know if it's because y'all look at this i don't know if it's because we went down to east texas at the beginning of, of march mm -mm. the pollen here is I think the pollen, the pollen is demonic or something. Like the pollen is like alien or is there, it's, it's ridiculous. So while I'm, while I'm driving around there, I typically drive around with my windows up because you know, it's not even, it's not hot. It's not, it's not hot. It's not cold. Baby, look, when I let down those windows, within a couple of minutes, I started coughing, got to my parents' house had a coffin fit, had to take my inhaler, got over to my sister's house a couple of hours later, was coughing, went to my car. There's green dust all on the window. Oh my God, hell no. Sorry y'all, so anyway, we went to Houston. My husband um, 
literally lives downtown, midtown Houston. When I tell you we had such a good time, I shared some of the events on my Instagram account. Shaw, all we did was eat. Eat, 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 eat. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful time. And so we plan on going back in April. Now, I don't like to share a lot about my personal life because I believe there are certain things that you keep private. And I'm that type of person. I, I tend to keep some things private. But I did have a comment on um, one of my uh, chit chat videos. Hold on, y'all. One of my chit chat videos a while back on how are we going to maintain this? Sorry, y'all. I'm getting a lot of a lot of emails from work. So anyway, um, this individual wants to know how are we going to do it, girl? How are we going to maintain it? You know, I will say this. I think a lot of it is about communication. Um, uh, that way, you know what to expect. And we already talked about uh, seeing each other more often and making sure because Houston is just three hours away, y'all. Is it could be a hit or miss, you know, depending on when you leave. But it's not like it's it's a state away. It's just three hours south. But with that being said, we've seen each other twice in a month. Um, and let me tell you something. Like I said, I don't have to. I don't like to share too much. But in addition to being a wife, a mother, um, a content creator, I'm also a webcam girl. <laughs> Let me, let me sip some of this. You can take that how you want it. Yes, ma'am. I'm also, <laughs> I'm a webcam girl. You know, I will, you know, I have all my bits of lingerie and yeah, that's all we're going to say about that. Yes. Besides that, you guys, I try to keep my videos, excuse me, I try to keep my videos lighthearted, but when we came back from Houston and coming up towards Dallas, we were stopping at some places, which we probably shouldn't. We stopped at a Bucky's, like an hour away from home. And because it was spring break, it was so crowded. It was spring break in the rest of Texas um, last week, right? So while we were coming into, driving into Houston, I saw the sign for exiting towards Italy, Texas. Those of you who don't know, a couple of weeks ago, it was in the news that a Dallas mom had stabbed to death a couple of people in Italy, Texas, which unfortunately resulted in the deaths of three of her children. So, you know, when I saw that, I literally, I mean, I literally got choked up because I, I, I had forgot about it. And then when you see it, you're like, oh my God, <clears throat> that, that young woman actually lived in, in my city. She lived about 10 minutes away from here and a division called Windmill Farms. We call it WMF here. It's one of the rougher subdivisions, Windmill Farms, but she was visiting her kids in Italy, Italy, Texas. Now, from what I understand, she was supposed to have supervised visitations, and that wasn't the case. So a CPS worker was visiting because she had a hunch that the visits were... Um, not being supervised. I believe the grandkids were with the grandmother and we're gonna call her Hall. Her last name is Hall. She has a twin sister, which I'm gonna get to in a minute. We're gonna call them the, the Hall sisters. Y'all, my hair is really, it really started to knot up in certain areas, which is why I wanted to, Jesus, hold on y'all. So anyway, so I believe the altercation occurred because the CPS worker showed up. So she ended up stabbing a couple of people there, including five of her kids. Unfortunately, th three of the children, which was a set of twins and another child ended up uh, dying away from their, from their staff wounds. The way I probably, what I think may have happened, the reason why, cause she stabbed all the babies and the youngest ones were literally babies um, and they survived. So what I'm thinking happened, and this is just a, a, a hunch, is that the reason why the other ones probably, the older ones died is because they were probably trying to fight her. So she kept stabbing them. Now, this is the thing, you guys. Her sister, her twin sister, did the same thing last year where she actually killed one of her children. I believe the child was seven years old, stabbed another child who was a teenager, 16. And she's currently 
in a um, state institution, state mental institution right now. Absolutely horrible. You want to? So, girl, let's change the subject. So, YouTube, the YouTube algorithm is a mess. My, and I said this before, <clears throat> my view camp, my view counts are at a all time record low. My check for this past year was only a couple of dollars more than what my first YouTube paycheck was. That's, that's crazy. So on average, I'm getting paid $200 less a month. It's something, hell. It is, hey, that's what I'm saying. It's something I'm getting. At. Let me tell you something. I'm still grateful to get paid doing what I love to do. It's just very frustrating. But that's me with, you know, 30,000 subscribers. There are so many other uh, YouTubers who are not only losing out on sponsorships. Uh, my sponsorships and stuff like that stopped years ago, way before COVID, only because there were so many new people coming up and at the time you guys i want to tell you something um when i was getting the spot at the time when i was getting the sponsorships a lot of people were new a good one is busby was new when she came when she came out um and when i finally recognized who she was she was at like 10 15 000 subscribers and i believe at the time i had probably five or five or more five thousand more than she did i was getting the sponsors then things changed. She came up. A lot of other natural hair YouTuber comp came up, and those sponsorships came to them. Went to them. No problem. They absolutely deserve it. But I'm just telling you, the game has changed. The game has changed because this plat this this platform is so oversaturated with a lot of people. Right? A lot of people doing wonderful things too. Okay. There's there's room for everyone at the end of the day. Sorry, y'all. I literally have been interrupted every two to three minutes while I'm on here. It's it's Thursday. People are contacting me. Whatever. It is what it is. So, my views are so at a, like I said, they're at a record time low. Um, I was averaging averaging for at least for my chit chats well over 500, 700 views between five hundred and seven hundred views. Hair related videos over a thousand. My last video that got over a thousand views was a hair related video. A mask, but then there's been other hair related videos that don't get close to a thousand. So I don't know what it is, you guys. I'm still gonna keep producing content. All I'm saying is that it's just it's just very frustrating to keep doing this. And my um subscriber um subscriber counts are slowly going up, but it's very slow. It's very slow, but like I said, I'm not the only one who's noticing it. Who I'm not the only one who's noticing it. Um, recently, I saw a video from Brooklyn. Y'all know uh, the the plus size diva who's fabulous at makeup, at makeup and all that. And she was saying how her views have changed. And sure enough, I looked at her views based on what she used to do and it's drastically different but baby that's nothing i saw another youtuber who has well over a million subscribers tell me why her vlogs vlogs are only getting a thousand views you got a million she has a million subscribers like 1.2 i don't under, i don't remember the young lady's name but she has over a million subscribers and her vlogs at only over uh, a thousand. Then you have someone like I am Sharika B, based out of Florida, who grew fast. She is now getting huge um, numbers based on her vlogs. We well, love her vlogs. I like Sharika. I like her um, as an individual. She's an older YouTuber too, meaning she's in her forties and she's a boss. <laughs> She cooks, she goes out, and she buys stuff. She works out. I like her. I really do like her. Um, I'm also seeing, which I get so fascinated, you guys, by people of all different backgrounds. I'm seeing an overwhelming amount of trans YouTubers who are speaking on the detransition de phase. So what that means is basically you have some transsexuals who regret transitioning and a lot of this is when they go through bottom surgery um there are a couple at least two i know 
um, that come to my, no, there's about three that I watch and most of them are, besides the one, the two were men, they transitioned to women, and then the one was a man transitioned to a, excuse me, it was a woman transitioned to a man. The one thing I do admire, and I, I'm going to say this, and it is what it is, the LGBTQ community is the one community where you have to be very careful what you say, how you say it, because then you can come off as transphobic, homophobic. I will also want to say this. I feel like some people in that community, not all, um, it's almost like walking on eggshells. You know what I mean? It's almost like walking on eggshells. So I do admire the people. And these are, again, these are people in that community. These are trans. They're, they're YouTubers who are saying, this was the biggest mistake I've ever made of my life. Um, a lot of them are now stating that when they went to the doctors and went to people, that they almost forced them to say, okay, you need to ha go ahead and have surgery since you really are supposed to be a woman. But when you do that, there's no going back. When you, when you, ch especially the bottom, you can take off your breasts. Once you get implants, you can take those out. Once you get rid of your penis, that's it. It's a done deal. That is why I saw a clip, um, uh, actually a couple of weeks ago of Jazz, who's a transsexual, um, male to, male to female, and the T.S. Madison. And T.S. Madison was basically, basically like, I don't want to disrespect you. I don't, I don't want to, you know hurt any feelings or be disrespectful but the girls that i know that did that went effing crazy meaning the ones that had the bottom surgery they turned out because you know t.s medicine kept her so which is why we know her as the big you know what so she kept her bottom she kept everything down below and so i think that you know t.s madison did not get through the through to jazz she's still y'all who keeps calling me hold on y'all so, yeah, you guys, it's just very interesting to see, you know, so many, not so many, but I think that the part that I really, really do agree with is that before, first of all, I don't think anything life-changing should happen to someone under the age, I'm going to be bold enough to say under the age of 20. So, I guess what's the point is that a lot of the uh, YouTubers I saw that were talking about this subject were seeing that instead of jumping to let's change your body let's jump into let's look into getting you some help let's look into getting you some therapy um instead of doing something that is you may regret later on okay and that's advice for anything honestly let alone this so anyway you guys that is what i'm watching on youtube now girl what i'm watching on tv so I continued with the center on Netflix and it is good. It's still, it has that dark. So continuing with that, I keep getting suggested suggestions for catching fire. You know what? Let me tell you something. I don't like Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. I don't know what it is about, about her that I don't like. I don't like her. I really don't like her. And I'm like, Vivian, there's no reason why you, you should not like this child. If she didn't do nothing to you, I just don't. There's something about her I don't like, y'all. I don't know what it is. I know what it is. I feel like she, all of a sudden, after a few movie roles, she all of a sudden became big for no reason. No, it's not for no reason. I believe she had a sponsor. You know what I mean? I believe she was on a casting couch for a couple of people. I shouldn't say that, but that's how she was able. Yeah, she's a wonderful actress, but no. Girl, I'm on Snowfall, you know, um, what's his name? Franklin. This is the last season, and Franklin, somebody's going to die. I don't know who it's going to be. I'm scared from Franklin. I'm scared for Wanda. I'm scared for Franklin Mama. It, it just makes a scare for Franklin's um, uh, fiance. It just makes me so. This this series is giving me some anxiety. So, Franklin is really morphing into this drug lord who is unforgivable, especially now since he's fighting with Jerome, his uncle. Interesting. Now, Luther is on Netflix with your man, Idris Elba. 
it's up there in the top 10 but but hear me out y'all know me i love me a good bbc movie or even a series but i just can't get over his accent and is that a cockney accent it's really hard for me. I've always known that he wasn't from the States, but that cockney, that I just can't. I know a lot of people, especially women, they like it, but I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I, girl, get over it. I know. I Get over it. Riddick is on Netflix. I absolutely love Riddick, you guys. I think that um, your boy did a great job. He produced that, if I remember. He either produced or direct Riddick. Did y'all know that? Riddick is such a great trilogy. I love all three movies. I rewatched Stepmother with Julia Roberts and Susan Sarandon. Sarandon. I was trying to go back and watch these movies, you guys, when I watched earlier, and it hits differently. First of all, a lot of these movies came out when I was a young adult, uh, and then sometimes I watch it again, and then now I'm watching it after I've become a mother. So some of these movies hit differently when you become an adult and hit differently once you become a mother or once you become a wife. It's just, it, it's different for me. Because when I was first watching, when I first watched Stepmom, I thought that the, the, um, the uh, uh, Susan Sarandon's character had every right to you know, act how she was acting because here comes this younger woman coming in trying to fill in the role with her husband, her ex-husband. It's like, who are you? But now that I'm adult and I'm matured and I'm a, I'm a mommy, I look at it as Julia Roberts' character was just not trying to help. She's not a mother herself. She's not used to children and small children at that. So Susan's a random character was just being petty for no reason. Petty for no reason. I mean, of course you're still hurt. Um over some things that happened in the past, but that's in the past, you know what I mean? So you have to learn how to be mature for the sake of your children. I'm grown, child, I told y'all I was grown. So let's talk about it, y'all, Swarm. So it had came up in a Facebook group that I'm, that I'm in, and so a woman asked, oh, is anyone watching Swarm? I'm like, what, Beyonce got a new show out? So I, <laughs> so I looked at a trailer and I'm like, what the hell is this about? And y'all saw I had, you know, asked you guys if you were watching it in the community. Baby, let me tell you something. After I saw the responses, I looked at the trailer again. And I'm like, you know what? Let me look and see what's on Amazon Prime. Because I don't have Amazon Prime video or whatever. Because I'm like, oh, I'm already playing for Hulu and Netflix and Sling. No, that's too much. So I saw a couple of things I was interested in, in addition to Swarm. And I'm like, like the one that I think was Nanny. I'm going to watch that. I was like, okay, Netflix, you got me for nine dollars or eight ninety nine, nine dollars. I'll go ahead and submit to this, baby. When I tell you, I watch the first episode. I was taking a nap. I was on the way to take a nap. I watched the first episode. That nap went out the door. Then I was like, what the hell is going? When I tell you, this is the weirdest show I have ever seen. It is take you on a roller coaster of emotions. I'm like. Was Donald Glover taking acid when he thought about, you know, the plot of this? But it is great. The main actress is great. Every episode has a guest star. So let's talk about the first one, baby. I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna reveal a lot, but spoiler alert, I'm gonna say much. I'm gonna talk about bits and pieces because I finished it. <laughs> I finished that whole okay, finished, I finished the show in like a day. When I tell you this show had me in a chokehold, I was like, and, and by the second episode, I was like, I'm not gonna watch this shit. This is too much for me. I ain't got no more anxiety medication. I can't do it, but we're gonna do it. So the first episode, again, like I said, y'all, I was in the middle of a nap. I was tired. I'm watching it and it starts off with a girl named Drea or Dre. Is it Dre or Dre? And she's with a roommate named Marissa. And they're talking and all of a sudden, I'm hearing some huffing and puffing. Marissa is getting her back blown out by some steadily gentleman. I'm like, what the hell is this? So it goes on. And then the main actress, the main character, Drea, she has a fascination with an artist named uh, Nigel. Nigel? Nigel? And I'm like, oh, I know her. I'm like, no, I don't. That's a, that's a fictional character. Look, because at the beginning of the series, it gives you a little like, this is based off of fiction. And it's like, some of this shit may be true. And I'm like, I, I pause and go to Google and try to see, okay, who is this person? It's fictional. 
Now, some of the events are based on real life, which we're going to get to later on. So, first episode, I'm like, okay, why did it take me 30, 30 or 40 minutes into the first episode to realize that the boyfriend of Marissa was Desmond Idris, old boy from Snowfall? When I found that, I was like, oh, let me rewind back to that first five minutes. So, the first episode, I didn't catch it was him until his, his he does the Cali accent. And I know it's him. So I'm like, this is, this is my boo. So I went back and watched that. Awesome, awesome, awesome first episode. Some things happen. There's a lot of triggers in this in this series in general. And, but it's weird as hell. The main character has this weirdness, awkwardness about her. I'm like, okay, she's an introvert. Look, I'm trying to, as the episodes go on, go on I'm trying to diagnose her. Like, my ass is a psychotherapist. I'm like, oh, She's schizophrenic. I'm like, oh, she's not schizophrenic. I'm like, oh, no, she doesn't have schizophrenia. She has multiple personality disorder or DID. Disassociative identity disorder is what I believe it is. That, I'm like, she's so awkward. So, this is the creepiest thing. So, I'm getting to the second. Of course, things happen to our boo disc. And I'm like, what the hell? He's fine. What's going on? Again, spoiler alert. She's crazy as hell. <laughs> I know y'all told me, but ma'am, if I hadn't known by the other character, Marissa, who is played by Chloe Bailey, if I hadn't known that there were adults, I would have assumed that she was a teenager because the main character is emotionally immature. She's immature all the way around, but definitely emotionally immature. She's awkward. She's weird. There's nothing wrong with that, but when you mix it all together in a big bottle of DID, you, you it's a problem. It's gonna be a problem. Um, I thought she was a teenager, and it was it was interesting because homegirl uses a credit card and basically her rent money to buy these nausea tickets, which is like crazy, like the Beyonce tickets. And her her roommate Marissa's like, uh, I thought you said you were broke. That goes on and on, you guys. It is just like every episode, I'm like, what the hell? I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So every episode, I'm even more confused. So it goes back and forth with timestamps too. It's 2017, then it's 2018, okay? So then it breaks off to where she's a freaking stripper. I'm like, okay, Drea, okay, come on through. But then the other, you know, strippers are like, look, you about to make some, some, uh, wheelies in her limp. Ain't nobody try to get hype off of that mess. <sighs> so she ends up again, whacking somebody else off and a very, like, you're not expecting the shit to happen. She's just, just killing people left and right, mopping up blood all everywhere. So there's one scene where the one big body red bone, uh, Stripper is like, you want to make some money? And Drea's like, okay, where are we going? They end up going to this, I want to say like a frat boy's house with um, with, with Caucasian men, Kazakoi men. Look, watch this by yourself. I watched this while JB was at school all day. I didn't stop because it's only seven episodes. I watched it all day, one sitting, eating watermelon and shit. So look, one scene, somebody's doing a line of crack. One scene, some, someone's been over. One scene... And what is too much for me is that the men were also naked. Look, very rare do you have a show where you see full body nudity. That that scene where the guy that she was with the night before comes up with a bowl of strawberry, a bowl, yeah, a bowl of strawberries, and he sits down. Why is that bowl of strawberries clean, clear? And when he sits down, you can see his little Peter. Peter, look, it was like this. He's like, you want some strawberries? And you can see his his penis through. Don't nobody want no damn strawberries. <laughs> Y'all, I'm all over the place because this show is all over the place. Again, you have guest appearances by Idris Elba. No, girl, Desmond, Desmond Idris. What's her name? What's the young white girl name? Billie Eilish. She's so pretty, y'all. Um, Chloe. One of the Obama sisters, girls, I think she wrote one of the, the episodes, y'all. Y'all, this show is so messed up. This is the epitome of delusional. 
I'm going to create my own world because the real world is too much for me to handle. Honey, Leon is in this uh, episode later on walking around with a double gauge, double barrel shotgun with his fine ass. <clears throat> there are some things that happen that I still don't understand. I will say this though. I wasn't feeling the last episode. I'm not going to give any spoilers. I wasn't feeling the last episode because I thought it was going to bring some closure or understanding to the entire series. And it didn't for me. I don't know if it did for you. Overall, it is good. So, of course, with it called Swarm, we think of the Beehive. Beyonce stands, fans that are crazy as hell sometimes. But, baby, the, the Swarm is like Beyonce fans with Norman Bates, Jason, and Michael Myers all in one. So, another thing that was a bit disturbing is throughout the series, you hear the sound of a hive, a beehive. Sometimes it's... it's a little subtle sound is very quiet and other times it's loud sometimes it's overlapping music sometimes it's just the sound of the hive which messes with your damn anxiety but it's, it's nicely done it was nicely done there were some episodes that were a little bit more triggering than others uh overall it's a good series i'm interested if there's going to be a season two um I think the main actress did a phenomenal job. Let me tell you something. It's hard to play a crazy person. I could imagine that it was draining for her to play someone like that. Um, but she did a good job. <laughs> she did a really good job. So, child, yeah, Swarm, y'all. It is on Amazon Prime. I got Amazon just to see this. And it was worth it. Even though I wasn't impressed by the last episode, I'm not going to give any, any spoilers. But I'm so dang on confused by the whole shebang. I'm going to watch it again. I sure am. I'm going to watch it again because I need to get some questions answered. I'm going to watch it again. So, all right, you guys. I'm going to continue to do this last section of my hair. And that is it, everyone. Thank you so much. And thank you as always to all of my new subscribers. Take care.